This recording will be discussing the um, self-service aspect of the Delphix virtualization engine. And self-service comes very handy when developers and testers um, need access to non-production environments. This is the real agility of the Delphix dynamic data platform and that the developers, testers can actually refresh, rewind, bookmark their data sets without getting the DBA involved. They can actually not worry about creating save sets. Developers who are running a match and drop routine or a match and merge routine, loading tons of data that can be uh, populated throughout a database. They can simply bookmark the database where they start their load, validate at the end of the load everything was successful and they were pleased with the results. If they weren't pleased with the results, they can simply rewind that database with the simple API call. What you're seeing here is the Delphix virtualization management console. I will reach over into the self-service console. It's going to look slightly different. And again, this information I'm showing you today is all web service uh, enabled. All these processes can be handled through curl calls, through API calls, um, as you integrate with some of your continuous integration, continuous delivery programs like GitHub or Docker or any of those orchestration tools that are calling uh, downstream systems to complete a full workflow. In this case, you're seeing a template called this Suite CRM Dev Template. This corresponds to our development database. The template is basically the main, I guess, um, root of all the databases that would be spawned from it and those are you sometimes it can be a production sometimes it can be a masked source database and then from there they would have multiple containers so you would have a mass source that continuously syncs with the production database then has mass process run against it and then containers underneath that would be maybe one for dev a b c or or several for you know testers or whichever and then these containers are then worked on by those teams or those individuals. And that's these containers. In this particular container, there's one. But if there were multiple containers, maybe Suite CRM QA, Datapod. And a Datapod really is a grouping of these virtual databases and virtual data assets. Uh, they work great if you have a, like a QA environment where you need the database um, for the transaction database. Then you have a like a financial database and maybe a customer database that all need to be tested and validated and move through the development cycle at the same time. And with one API call, you can actually start and stop those three databases, reset those three databases, bookmark them, very agile in terms of um, that workflow itself. I'll be able to select the database and in, or the data pod in which it shows you which owners have access. This one is particular dev only. And then I'm going to look at the data operations screen. And what I have at the data operations screen here is the actual ability to move about a timeline on a particular branch. In this instance, this Sweet Serum has a default branch with different components, different bookmarks added on timelines that have been reset. Kind of shows the workflow, uh, the activities that have occurred then. And in this case, they decide to version this timeline against an application release 1.3. Activity on this timeline is independent on activity on this timeline. I can actually take a bookmark and I'll do this now and I'll say before demo I can add tags, I can actually determine when I need this deleted or I can keep it indefinitely and I can create that bookmark. That bookmark is actually just going back to the data file, the files themselves, the block levels, adding those indexes and creating a save point, if you will, so that when you need to restore, refresh back to this point in time, it's all handled at the storage level and then mixed in with some API calls to the database and the applications that then can um, stand up and validate those data files as it um, restores and then um, starts up those databases. I now have a shared bookmark. This is, again, I'm showing you what would happen. A developer might want to come in and they might actually want to run maybe a, a delete a record or two in their database. And let me show how that might look. So here's my CRM database, fictitious users. Let's simulate, you know, a bulk action of a delete. So maybe I um, actually deleted these records, as you can see, and say, sure, I want to delete them. 
And you're going to see them remove. Now I'm down to 180. And then a developer might say, oh, that's not really what I wanted to do. I really didn't want to delete all that information. I really just wanted to delete the one record. I, ac I made an accident. In any case, they would have had to do two things without the Delphix virtualization. One, they would have had to create a, a backout script. A lot of developers have to create their own backup script. And when you delete records, you're not necessarily just deleting from one table. It might actually uh, need to delete from several different tables. You, you know, it could be very complicated backout scripts, especially if there's triggers firing and things like that. You just don't know what's going on. And in a development effort, you might have things that aren't quite set properly. It could be a lot of work. With the Delphix, since he took a bookmark of that exact database before he actually ran that mistake, he can actually reset, which I'll show you the reset right back to that point in time. I want to release, say, sure, I want to re nope. oh, restore. Sorry about that. I'm going to restore back to that demo before demo bookmark that I took. Resetting would have just taken me all the way back to the beginning of that, that time value. So as it's doing this effort, what it's actually doing is it's stopping the database, it's unmounting those files, and then it's going to rewind, repoint those disks to those that save point we made or that bookmark. It's going to reset, then it's going to start the database. The database is going to go through a recover motion and then stand that database back up, and then you should be able to access. If I went now to this application and ran a rewind, um, Nope, still, there it goes. So now the database is now offline. That's all that's occurring there. So what we have at this point, as it's getting working through, it's updating the actual Delphix configuration database itself, bookmarking different things in there, indicating what's been done, actually creating a history, kind of a log file of what was going on at the time. Um, showing you some of the usage of this activity. You can see today this activity is going up. A summary of the operation counts. We're going to see a lot today because we've worked on this suite. As this is moving, um, I'll just talk a little bit about if I were to need to activate this branch. As you can see, it's a gray star, so it is not active. The red star indicates it's active. I could, um, in the middle of an activity, so it's not going to allow me, but I would be able to activate this, the bookmark more branch. Sharing a branch, or sharing a bookmark, I'm sorry, would be, um, and I'll show you that when this is completed. But that ab provides the ability for the, the containers within this same template to actually see each other's work. So maybe a developer has completed their sprint, and they want to send it over to a QA analyst to say, hey, can you quickly test uh, that problem we had and see if my work has resolved it? Um, and they can actually then share the bookmark. The tester can pull in their bookmark, activate that bookmark that was shared. It would stop their current uh, activities, shut their databases down that they're working on, re uh, install it with this information. All the, From what the server sees, it's going to have the same name as that QA uh, database had to begin with. They'd be able to test, uh, double check what that developer had, indicate, yeah, everything looks fine. Stop that work right back to where they were they were before the developer had um, requested that support. So now that we see we've completed this um, reset before, if I were to go in, refresh my application, you'll see that I now have those 200 records back. That's the simplest form of you know just rewinding it to where we need to go. Back to the self service, what I was indicating is if I wanted to then actually take this. Maybe at this point, I'm now on release 1.4. Right. At this point, it's a bookmark of 1.4 that I'm going to then branch off so that my release 1.4 can then match the code, the branch 1.4 code that I'm working on, really keep things in sync uh, with each other. I can go ahead and share this bookmark. And if I look at my uh, bookmarks at this container, it's showing the various um, bookmarks I've created. Which ones I've shared, it's highlighted in red, and you can see them with the check mark. If I haven't shared them, they're simply um, grayed out in terms of this respect. Looks like this is back online. Kind of running out of real estate here on my screen. If I wanted to activate this particular branch again, 
that would be very simple. Um, oh, let me go ahead and create this um, branch again. And there's the branch I'm creating on 1.4 based on that bookmark I just created. And that is it for my demonstration of um, self-service.